you hope to save the marriage. So how does cheating or sleeping with other women, if you don't consider it cheating, if she not want to be with me, rebuild if, the marriage? If, if, like you asked when you are you guys separated? Yes, we both said I don't want to be alone. Who does? I have to find somebody else that's going to love me. Miss Hall and her mother were furious at the defendant for refusing to help take care of their baby. The defendant, Mr. Richards, on the other hand, believed the reason she was trying to pin the baby on him was that she was obsessed with him, and there was no way he could be the father of the child. Ms. Hall, you and your mother are furious with the defendant because he denies your one-month-old son, Damani, and does nothing to support him. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Richards, you believe that Ms. Hall is claiming you are the father because she wants to be with you. Uh, you say Ms. Hall was thirsty for love and she needs My to go mother. find her child's real dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Her mother is quite furious, that's for sure. Ms. Hill claimed that a couple of years back, she and Mr. Richards used to date and things didn't work out so well. Mr. Richards then reached out to her again and she decided to give him another chance. A couple years back, he broke my heart. Then I decided, he hit me up and I decided to give him another chance. You all were boyfriend and girlfriend a couple years ago or you were just dating? We're D dating. And so he breaks your heart? Yes. And you didn't see each other for a while? Yeah. And then somehow he comes back into the picture because if he's potentially the father of He is the message her. Hitting her. Even Judge Lauren could not make sense of what Mr. Richards was trying to say. She decided to ask him to explain what he meant by the word thirsty. Trust me, what he said next left everyone in the courtroom in shock. It's, it's the fact that I knew I wasn't gonna have a long relationship with her, but when you feed somebody the lines that you know they wanna hear, that's thirst to get what you want from them. Oh! But yet now it's a baby involved with your thirst. And now so, I feel oh, like she's being thirsty, trying to put the baby on me. But you got nothing. So, oh, 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 I must got oh, something if I you want something. So that's why I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. That explains why Ms. Hill's mom is furious to the bone. Mr. Richards is just a horrible person. Now, when Mr. Richards reached out to Ms. Hill again, deep down in her heart, she was happy to hear from him. She had no idea he was back to break her heart a second time. This was how she explained the situation. Like... It ended bad, but in the same token, I did like him. So when he hit me up, it kind of like, oh, I think I should give him another chance. Maybe it'll work out this time. But all right. At what point, so you all start obviously having sex again. Yeah. Using protection all the time or not? No, not, not at all. Hmm. Mr. Richards is definitely here for a good time, not for a long time. I mean, how do you just get back together and after a week, you call it quits? That's crazy. Mr. Richards, trying to defend himself, claimed that he went through her phone and saw some funny texts, but Judge Loren slammed him like this. Grabbed her phone and went through her phone and the text message is from someone saying that I'm outside. So when I go outside to get the water, I look across the street, it's the same dude I see coming out the gate. So I'm like, whoa, I didn't say anything. And I probably spent the rest of that day on the couch to the bus came. Bus came, I hopped on the bus. Soon as I got on the bus, officially on the bus, I sent the message. Like, I seen the messages in your phone. Moving on, when Ms. Hill found out she was pregnant, she refused to tell Mr. Richards about the pregnancy. She claimed she was still hurt and had not let go of how disrespectful he was to her during their time together. But her mom advised her to tell Mr. Richards. I knew, but I didn't want to tell him because how we broke up and how disrespectful he was to me. So you just kept it to yourself? Yeah, I didn't tell nobody until me and my mom sat down and she asked me because the consecutive Date. When she told me her due date, we discussed it and I told her. That didn't come as a shock. It's obvious he was going to deny the baby. Mr. Richards, however, kept telling the judge that there was another guy in the picture that Ms. Hill was refusing to reveal. Judge Lauren then decided to press further and ask her about the guy, and this was the confession that came out. You testified earlier that this was some random man that lived in the house behind your house, and he was just leaving out of his house through the gate. So do we know him or we don't know him? Is he giving you gifts or is he not giving you gifts? What is, what is this? Is it, 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 so it's not a man that lived in the house. It was a man that was pursuing you. Hmm. So there was actually another guy in the mix. Looks like Mr. Richard wasn't lying after all. It was only right that Judge Lauren asked Mr. Richard if he saw any other evidence that made him doubt the paternity of the child. He responded to the question like this. Makes you fall in that window. What else? Other than me seeing that guy in the messages, there was just my relative heard from one of her relatives that Ooh, she I... was living with the man the whole time she was pregnant. With she another... never, never lived with nobody. Well, not live with him. He lived with he her. 
or saying, whatever. He's saying hearsay. He's saying hearsay because he don't even know that to be true. Well, I guess that takes us to the DNA results. Mr. Richards was not going to accept being the father unless the results revealed that he was. And so here comes Judge Lauren's verdict. Mr. Richards, you are the father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you are the father. Thank you. That's your beautiful little boy. Mm. <laughs> How's it feel? Like being a dad all over again. <laughs> How do you feel in this moment, Miss Hall? I see tears in your eyes. What are you feeling? I'm angry, because... Mr. Angelari was in court, furious as a hungry lion. He had an affair with a married woman and now believes he is the father of her child. Ms. Vargas, on the other hand, claims he can't be the father, and that just got on Judge Lauren's nerves. He stated his case by saying this. Mr. Angelari, you claim the defendant, Ms. Vargas, was married and having an affair with you when she got pregnant. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Now, you say she initially told you that you were not the father of her 11-month-old son, but then dropped the bomb that the child was indeed yours. That is correct. After her marriage was over. That is correct. At least one fact has been established. They weren't in a relationship. Ms. Vargas needed a shoulder to cry on, and Mr. Angelari was her perfect subject. But things were about to get very intense. Mr. Angelari claimed that all he wanted to do was be there for Ms. Vargas when her relationship with her husband was rocky. One night, we ended up back at my place. We'd been at the club, we got turned up. We're out there doing our thing. We went to the house, started doing our thing. Our thing? Yeah. Your Honor. <laughs> That night, when, when we, you know, had sexual intercourse, you planned to get me pregnant. I feel like you did. Oh, no, that's a... Isn't that just cute? The way they spoke about each other made one think they were in a beautiful relationship. Moving on, when Ms. Vargas found out she was pregnant, she told Mr. Angolari that he was the father. After a while, she decided she wanted to work things out with her husband. So, do you immediately think it was your ex's, or do you think it was Mr. Angelari's, or are you just clueless? I wanted it to she be... She told me the baby was mine, and the next thing you know, she's telling me it's her husband. I wanted to work things out with my husband, Your Honor. I wanted to do you it You gotta for face him. reality. So, when you first found out you were pregnant, Ms. Vargas, did you call Mr. Angelari and say, this child is yours? Yes, Your Honor. Looks like her decision to want to work things out with her husband blew up in her face. While trying to work things out with her husband, she told Mr. Angelari that she needed some space and time to figure out a way. But Mr. Angelari just couldn't get the thought of being the child's father out of his head. You asked him to give you some space because you're trying to work this out with your yes, husband. Yes, Your Honor. I moved away anyhow. You respected that to a certain extent, but in your mind, you knew that you could possibly well, have a, a child. Feel, I had a gut feeling, so come September-ish is when I contacted her husband and her, saying, you know what? Reality, whether you dislike me, whether you like me, you need to let me know if this is my child. They aren't wrong about that, though, as the child needs to know who to call daddy and mummy. Even with both of them agreeing that they want to do right by the kid, Mr. Angelari claimed that he felt it in his gut that Ms. Vargas was trying to be shady with him and her husband. Here's why he felt that way. Because the first few months, she's telling me I'm the dad. Then I end up getting a job up north. She told me, well, I want to try to work things out with my husband. I don't want him to try to get me for adultery or have anything happen with my children. I said, well, I can respect that. Do your thing. I moved up to Austin. She still lived down in Temple. I was 45 minutes away. I didn't talk to her. One of my friends that lived down in the same area told me, oh, she's getting big. She's ready to pop. So then come September, my conscience is really wearing out on me like. If there is anything these guys are good at doing, trust me, it's arguing. Now, Mr. Angelari felt the only reason Ms. Vargas was coming back to him was because things did not work out for her and her husband. And most importantly, she didn't want her child growing up without a father. I believe if her and her husband were still married, everything was still going well with them, I would never even hear about this. But I also see where she's coming from because she wants her son to have a father. And if he is my son, I want to be his father. I want to be involved in his life. And I want you to be involved. I want you to be there. Well, something definitely smells fishy about her story. First, she wants Mr. Angelari to be the father of her child, but she initially threatened to put a restraining order on him? Well, Mr. Angelari had some evidence to back up his accusation, and here's what he showed the judge. These are messages that say, I need you to give away your rights. I hope you stay away and never come around. I will put a restraining order on you. What kind of mother does that when you think that's the father? What really? had he done to warrant a restraining order? Nothing, Your Honor. So this is just angry it's talk. It's just being angry, just, I mean, he wasn't there. He would always make excuses saying, no, I can't, I can't send you money. One time, he said he was gonna send me money. I waited at Walmart. From her tone, Judge Lauren is starting to lose her cool. 
Trust me. One of the reasons Ms. Vargas changed her mind was that she claimed that as the baby got older, she noticed that he started to look like Mr. Angolari. But did Mr. Angolari feel the same way about the child? Well, she's lied to me on numerous occasions. I lived in the same city as she did until the kid was six months old, five months old. Why can't you get a hold of me then? I felt like he was starting to look more like you, and I wanted you to be there. Do you think he looks like me now? Yes. Because Do my other two kids resemble me spitting image. Of course, he's gonna look like the mother too. It's not just gonna be you. Well, yeah, that's understandable, but I don't see many of my traits. I guess we know why he wants to be part of the baby's life if he ends up being the father of the child. Anyway, enough drama and testing Judge Lauren's anger. The results are in, and it's time we find out who the real father of the child is. Mr. Angelari, you are the father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's all I've wanted. We. Like you said, everybody makes mistakes, but it's all about how you come out of it. And today, mm. he now has a mom and a dad. Absolutely. And he deserves it. Oh, yes, he him. does. He's a great you little hold guy. Him. Yeah, that's my son. Yes, it is. <laughs> the doubts start to troll in, and all hell starts to break loose. This frantic dad wants answers to the paternity puzzle that's been digging holes in his mind. Is he gonna get the answers he's looking for? Well, let's find out, shall we? The case began like this. Mr. Pickett, you claim that when your son turned three, the defendant, your wife, admitted to you that you may not be his biological father. You have petitioned the court for a paternity test seeking a definitive answer today with hopes that your son is biologically yours. That's correct, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Pickett and Ms. Pickett sure do look like the cute couples we expect them to be. But hold up, there's more to see than meets the eye. These two have been caught up in so much baby drama. Guess what, people? They're even separated. Must have been one hell of a ride for these two. Your family. Now let the court clarify, you two are separated right now. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Mr. Pickett, why are you so sure you are not Patrick's father? I took an extended vacation, let's call it, right? And during that vacation, you know, we had separated. So when I get back from the vacation. Don't forget, these two have been separated for a while. Mr. Pickett takes a vacation for work purposes, at least so he claims. He gets back from his vacation and pays a visit to Ms. Pickett to check on their son. That's when things start to get a little tricky. Now, I seen this guy here, so I don't know if that's mine or not. So ask my son, I said, who is that guy over there that bees at the house with your, with your mom? She, and my son, he's like five years old, little, little kid. He says, I think that's my mom's boyfriend. I'm like, ah, oh, for real? So I ask her, she denies it. Now, I hate these extended vacations, Your Honor. I took another one. Mr. Pickett, with the Mr. Innocent role, continues to explain his side of the story. And for some reason, it just doesn't make any sense. It's so confusing that Judge Lauren tells him to back it up. The things that popped out of his mouth were totally mind-blowing. Wait, no, I don't feel you. Back it up. I'm gonna back it up. Say it again. Her friend was dating my friend. He told me that the other guy that was there was for Shanae. So, so it was one of those type things. It was one of those type of things. Now this extended vacation is over. I'm back, I'm back again. I'm playing daddy. I have no problem with playing daddy. I love my kids. After being apart for God knows how long, they decide to give it another try and get back together. Yep, we all know where that's leading. Of course, things seem to be okay at first, but soon after, it all turns into wildfire. Things spiral out of control, and trust me when I tell you, it's worse than you can imagine. In the back of my mind, I wish I could blow this little thought out. So I'm, you're back together? We back, we back. It's cool. Swimming pools on the side of the house, everything, everything's good. Okay. So I ask her, she denies. I ask her, she denies. I'm what like, do you oh, ask her? I'm asking her, is these my kids? Is this my son? Have you been cheating? You know, I, I love you. I quit cheating. And you can ask the girls, they'd be like, man, I, I'm going home. I'm going they home. They were in an uproar. The little mysteries start to find their way out of the little corners, and things start to take an unexpected turn. Mr. Pickett finds out that his wife was getting intimate with another guy just before his kid was born. Oops! Things are about to get real juicy, guys. I can bet on it. If you're a real man, you will take the blame of your family being in any kind of disaster or anything like that. Let me recap your doubts. She admitted to an affair, number one. Right. While you were gone, you had no idea what she was doing. You know there might have been something I going knew, on. Your Honor, and then she admitted I to it. I called on that phone. This guy had to be the most dramatic man to ever walk the planet Earth. At every single junction of his narration, there was always a hilarious reaction from him. Even Judge Lauren couldn't hide her amusement. Now hold up, all that laughter was about to turn into a real hot mess. I went away on vacation, I let my family down. I left you out here. 
Right. You made some mistakes, so in the end, I'm going to forgive you. Yes. That's what you were saying to yes. her. It's, it's over. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to let it go, and we're going to try to put this marriage back together. Based on the fact that I want to be this little dude's, his son, his father, his, his son, because when I'm old and I need him, he'll be there for me. Now, Ms. Pickett wasn't having her best day in court. Trust me. You could read it off her face that she couldn't wait for the ground to open up and just swallow her. But come on, she cheated. I mean, it's only right that she felt that way. But is Mr. Pickett in a forgiving mood? I strongly doubt that. So, what do you have to add to this? Do you believe what Mr. Pickett is saying? That he's a forgiving man, he's made some mistakes? No. First of all, Brandon never forgave her for anything she's done. He loves his kids dearly, he wants to be with them all the time, he has them now, but he's never forgiven her. He's never given her a chance for anything. Now, they got into another argument about rebuilding their family. The only issue now was that Mr. Pickett was still sleeping around with another woman. How on earth were they going to make it work if he was doing that? Saying that you hope to save the marriage, so how does cheating or sleeping with other women if you don't consider it cheating? If she not wanting to be with me, if if, if, like you asked when you are you guys separated? Yes, we both said so I, I don't want to be alone. Who does? If you're not, if we're not in agreement that we want to be lovers and friends, and you want to let your sister is talking more than you control your life, then I have to find somebody else that's going to love me and my children. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Pickett and Ms. Pickett. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks. Mr. Pickett, you are his father. Oh, yeah. Well, I got something for you. Hold on. Oh, let's see. Let's straight up. Let's straight up. Okay. Now, you were about to get tackled by Jerome. I seen it. You Don't beat me up. Don't beat me up. You know you need to do a flip. You, you, look, you look good. Well, I will say that's a first. This case was nothing short of heartbreaking for Mr. Robinson. After a 12-year relationship with the defendant, she broke the news to him that he might not be the biological father of his three-year-old son. Trust me, a lot was hanging on the line for Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson, after a 12-year relationship with the defendant, she confessed that your three-year-old son, Brandon Jr., may not be your biological child. Yes, now yes, you say your engagement to Ms. Fuller is broken off and your heart is in ruins yes, sure. because of the possibility you may now lose your son, too. Yes, Your Honor. We jump straight into the action, and right now, it's story time. Mr. Robinson, being the victim in this situation, was asked how he found out that the son he believed to be his all this while was no longer his. This was how he told the judge. Later on, after the party is over, I drop him off at his grandmother's, where I thought Miss Fuller would be, okay? Well, she didn't come down, that was fine, it was okay. I just dropped him off to his grandma. The next day comes, and I um, call, no answer. So I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, okay. So another day passed. I'm calling all day the next day. No answer. I'm like, man, what's going on? So maybe a day or so, I'm starting to get these phone calls, but they're private. Ouch. That's definitely going to leave a mark on baby daddy's heart. That wasn't even the worst part about the situation. When she noticed that the child was starting to look like the guy she had been cheating with, she didn't say a single word to Mr. Robinson. Started looking like the other guy. What did you say to Brandon Sr.? I didn't really say anything, like, we were struggling at the time, so we had to move, and I didn't want to go back to my mother's, and I just thought, at the time, I thought it was a better move for me, and it wasn't. <laughs> so, the truth is, while you all start struggling financially and all this was going on, you all trying to figure out where you gonna live... Ugh! Could the truth bombs go any easier on baby daddy? He looks like he's about to cry his eyes out. He had built an inseparable bond with the child. It was almost impossible for the child to accept another man as his father, even at a very young age. Oh, father. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Thank my you. guy. <laughs> that's the first time I held him and fed him. So you love this child. Oh. This is your son. And until he's six months old, you have absolutely no idea. None. Your Honor, none. That he potentially couldn't be your son. Oh, no way, no way that I would ever have thought that, Your Honor, that he... Things get really tricky from here onward, trust me. Now, one casual evening, baby dad is going through baby mamas. 
and he sees a text that sends him into a full denial mood. Apparently, Baby Mama had already told the guy she was sleeping with that the baby looked nothing like Mr. Robinson on and that she needed his help. Minds, you know what I'm saying? So instantly I get kind of nosy, you know what I mean? And I start going in inboxes, reading inboxes. So I'm reading these inboxes, but she sent the one uh, message to the guy and I guess that's when she went to go live with the guy. Okay. Saying that he didn't look anything like me and that she needed his help. You saw a message that basically said, the baby doesn't look anything like Brandon Sr. Right. So Trust me, you don't just see something like that and remain calm. I would be furious to the bone. Well, that boat sailed and the next boat carried an even heavier bombshell. Apparently the affair with the guy was not a one-time thing. I met the guy a long time ago, like years ago. And we started seeing each other and I still, I don't know, I just still kept talking to him or whatever, but it was off and on for about eight years or whatever. Around the time- It around went the, on for how long? It was like eight years off and on, but it wasn't like- we Eight were, years off and on? Yes. <laughs> Baby Mama sure knows how to keep secrets. Some of the revelations happening in the courtroom were like a news flash for the baby daddy. He was just hearing them for the very first time. You were with this other guy as well. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, I can tell by the look on your face <laughs> you did not know this. Oh no, Your not at all, Your Honor. So what was your understanding of the relationship with the other guy? Because there's a lot of blue going on up there. No understanding, Your Honor. I didn't think it was another guy. No way. So this is your first time figuring that out right now? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm seating with Judge Lauren on this one. How do you keep an eight-year affair a secret from your fiancé? For baby daddy, there was no going back or making amends. If the child turned out to be for the other man, it was goodbye without looking back. Ship as far as what? Like our friendship that we have? Or no, I mean a relationship. Like together? No. She broke up with me, okay? We were supposed to get married in July, okay? So when Miss Fuller told me, you know, that she didn't want to be with me anymore or whatever, I said, fine, but there is no coming back. When you decide, okay, hey, I've sold my royal oats, I'm gonna come back and, you know, be with you. I won't be there like but that. But that's not why I but broke I up with you. Uff, this woman got some nerve. Instead of being ashamed of her wrongdoings and lies, she was defending herself. Anyway, Judge Lake heard enough of their testimony, so she determined that DNA was vehement in this paternity conflict. Mr. Brandon Robinson Sr., you are his father. <laughs> Well, I don't even have to ask you how you feel. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, this, this, like my son say, uh, he come to me, daddy, he be like, daddy, this the best day ever. You know how he always say? <laughs>